Hi guys, happy new year. Let's start with the very first question of IIT JW. Now this question is first of all related to the concept of sequences or progressions as you said. Let's first discuss the concept that we'll be using here. First we'll talk about arithmetic progression. Now when do we say that the terms are an arithmetic progression? When the difference between the two terms or I should say difference between the two consecutive terms is a constant value. So when I talk about this, if I have, let's say my first term is A, if I want the next term, I will add a difference to the previous term. If I want my next term, I will add again a difference in my previous term. So basically the next term in this case will become A plus 3D. So if you see the difference between the consecutive terms is a constant value. And such a sequence is nothing but your arithmetic progression. If I see the next list of terms, that is your geometric progression, the difference here is the ratio between the two consecutive terms here is again a constant value. So if I have my first term as A, the next term, if I want to find out in the case of geometric progression, it will become A into R. So I am multiplying the common ratio in the previous term to get the next term. After that, it would become A R square, A R cube, and so on. Now, if I want to find the sum of all the terms in the arithmetic progression, it is given by this formula, number of terms divided by two into two times the first term, plus number of terms minus one into common difference D. So this is how you get sum of all the terms in an arithmetic progression. And if I talk about sum of all the terms in geometric progression, it is given by first term into the common ratio raised to number of terms minus one upon common ratio minus one. This formula is used when you have the ratio between the two consecutive terms greater than one. So these are the two formulas that defines sum of all the terms in the arithmetic progression. And this is for sum of all the terms in a geometric progression. We will be using these two ideas in our present question. Now let's start with our question. Let's see the question. If I want to see this, the question says A1, A2, A3 are your sequence of positive integers. Now, mind you, this word is again very important. We have to keep this into consideration that the given list of terms are of positive integers. And this list of positive integers is given to be in arithmetic progression with a common difference of two. So difference between the two consecutive terms in this entire list of arithmetic progression is two. Now, the other list of terms that is given to me is B1, B2, B3. This is also given till Bn. This is a list of geometric progression and the common ratio here also is given us. So, this is again also a list of positive integers. So we need to keep that also into consideration. After that, it says A1 and B1, both of them are equal. So he is defining for us that the first terms in both the sequences are equal to each other. And that's equal to a new value that is C. So first of all, when they had said to us that both the lists are a list of positive integers and that's equal to C, means C is also a positive value and also an integer. So C is also a positive integer. Now let's find out, they are asking us to find out 
all the possible values of C for one equality which is given to us. Let's shift to the next page. First. So if I write that equality which is given to us first, it says two times sum of all the terms in arithmetic progression. And that's equal to till n number of terms, and that's equal to sum of all the terms in geometric progression. This is also carried on till n number of terms. So now, as we know, we already studied this that the first list of terms were arithmetic progression. Sum of all the terms in a list of arithmetic progression was given by number of terms divided by two. So if I use that formula, two is out. Number of terms are n upon two. First term is two times the first term plus number of terms minus one multiplied with the difference. That is equal to sum of all the terms in a geometric progression. Now, if I see that, that says first term, into the common ratio R raised to number of terms minus one upon R minus one. So here, if we say, we already know that A1 and B1 are equal to each other, that's equal to C. So I'll substitute that in the next step. Also, we know the common difference between the two consecutive terms is two. Common ratio is also two. So if we substitute that as well, we get, First of all, I can also cancel two here in this step. So I'm left with n, so n, two times c I can do, n minus one, the common difference is two. b1, again, I will replace that to the c. So this gives me two raised to n minus one upon two minus one. So two minus one, this becomes one. So use this idea first, becomes 2CN plus 2N into N minus 1 is equal to C raised to N minus 1 on 1. Now, if I solve this entire expression to find C in terms of N, because there are only two expressions I can see that is consisting of variable c and n. And since we need to find out the value of c here, I will write or I will try to write this entire expression in terms of n. So I'll write the entire term of expression of c in terms of n. So I'll take all the terms of c on one side. So if I write it 2n square minus 2n. So I have used this idea. I'll take this on the right hand side. So this will make it C outside 2 raised to n minus 1. And this, if it comes here, becomes minus 2 because I have already taken C outside here. So if I write this expression, C, I get it as 2n square minus 2n upon. 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 2n. Now let's start to solve this idea and find the value of c. Let's do that. So if first of all, if I write this here, c is 2n square minus 2n upon it was 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 2. Now, one thing to note out here is when we talked about the two expressions in the start of the question, we said that both the sequences or the progressions consisted of all positive integers. And since the first term of both the sequences were equal to C, so here also, if I talk about this value of C, this C has to be a positive integer. When C has to be a positive integer, C has to be any value greater than or equals to one. 
So if I talk about the value of C, it is greater than or equals to one. So if I substitute this expression instead of C here, I get two n square minus two n upon two raised to n minus one minus two. That's greater than or equal to one. If I see this becomes two n square minus two n greater than or equals to two raised to n minus one minus two. Now this minus two and minus two are the same on the both sides will get cancelled. So I am left with, if I take 1 on the left, becomes 2n square plus 1 greater than equals to 2 raised to n. So now we need to find some values of n that will satisfy this expression. And in the question, it says that this equality holds true for some positive integer n. So n is also a positive integer. But let's find out the range of values of n that will satisfy this expression. So if I talk about the positive integers of n, let's start with the first value of n that is n equals to 1. So if I put that here, let's see if it satisfies. So it gives me 2 into, if I put n as 1, 2 into 1 square that is 1 into 2, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3 that's greater than or equal to 2 raised to 1. That is true. Yeah, that is greater. So this is sufficient. n can be 1. This is possible. Now if I put n as 2, it gives me 2 square 4. 4 into 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. That's greater than or equal to 2 raised to 2. That is 4. So this is also possible. If I put n as 3 here, 3 square is 9, 9 into 2 is 18, 18 plus 1 is 19. That is again greater than 2 raised to n, that is 2 raised to 3 is 8. This is also possible. Okay. So if I go for n equals to 4, 4 square 16, 16 twos are 32, 32 plus 1 is 33. That's still greater than 2 raised to 4, 16. That is also sufficient. If I go for value of n equals to 5, 5 gives me 5 square 25, 50, 50 plus 1 is 51, and that is still greater than 32. This is also sufficient. n equals to 6. 36 into 2, 72. 72 plus 1 is 73. That is still greater than 64. This is also sufficient. If I put n as 7, this becomes 128. And if I find this, 49 is 7 square into 2 is 98 plus 1 is 99. Now, this is not possible because 99 is not greater than or equal to it is less than. So when this condition is not satisfied, n equals to 7. And further on, if you see, as we go on increasing the values of n, this part, that right-hand side, will always become greater than the left-hand side. So the values of n that satisfy this expression is 1 to 6. Now let's check for 1 to 6 values of n and understand where do we get c as a positive integer. So now what we need to do is we need to put all these values of n equals to 1 to 6 in this expression of c and find out which turns or which gives us a positive integer and that value of c becomes the answer for us. So let's do that. c was 2n square minus 2n upon 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 2. Now, first expression said n equals to 1. Now, if you see here, n equals to 1, if I put here, c becomes 2 into 1 square, that is 2, minus 2 into 1, that is again 2. So 2 minus 2 already makes it 0. That is not possible because c is a positive integer. So c cannot be 0. So n equals to 1 does not give us a value of c. If I put n as 2, 
C becomes 2 into 1, 2 into 2 square, that is 8. 8 minus 2 into 2 is 4. 2 raised to n is 4, minus 1, minus 2 into 2 is again. So this gives you 4 upon 4 minus 4 is 0 and 0 minus 1 is 1. So this is again a negative value. So not possible because C has to be a positive integer. N cannot be equal to 2 as well. Let's check for 3. So if I put N as 3, C becomes 3 square into 2. That is 18 minus 3 into 2, 6. 2 raised to 3, 8. Minus 1, minus 2 into 3, that is 7, 6. So this gives me 18 minus 6, that is 12. And this becomes 1. So this is 12. And this turns out to be a positive. So this is sufficient to so see one value we get for C that is 12. Let's check for 4, 5, 6 because we have been asked number of all possible values for C. C, if I want to find out for 4, it becomes 4 square 16. 16 twos are 32. Minus 2 into 4 is 8. 2 raised to 4 again 16. Minus 1. Minus 8. So it gives me 24 minus 16 minus 9 is 7. This is not divisible, so it won't turn out an integer value. So it's not an integer, so C cannot be 24 by 7 as well. This is also again not possible. N equals to 5. C becomes 5 squared 25 into 250 minus 2 into 5 is 10. 2 raised to 5, 32 minus 1, and 2 into 5, that is 100. So 40 upon 21, again not divisible, so not an integer value. C cannot be 40 by 21, n equals to 6 if I put. I get 36 into 2, that is 72 minus 12. Upon 2 raised to 6 is again 64. Minus 1, minus 2 into 6 is 12. So this will again become an even number 60 and this will still become an odd number. 64 minus 13, that is 51. Again, not divisible and will not give an integer value to you. So since it will also not give you an integer value, C so cannot be 60 upon 51. So the only possible value of C that we get here is 12. And that is the answer for this question that the value of the first term in both the expressions of arithmetic as well as geometric function is 12. So this is the answer. Also, let me know if you have any questions that are related to IIT JW. Like, share and subscribe if you found this really helpful. We'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you.